All right, uh, I just want to introduce you guys to a project that I'm working on now. Uh, I've always been somewhat concerned with the security of the trunk in the Model 3. Uh, the Tesla Model 3, what you're looking at here is a Tesla Model 3. Hopefully it should be familiar to a lot of people. And one of the things that there's a lot of reports on are people that, um, you know, when the car is parked, they'll try to get into your trunk. And as we all know, uh, there are these back windows uh, that we see here that I've actually covered with some aftermarket accessories. Uh, but this, what's behind this piece of plastic uh, that should be familiar to a lot of people is, um, is a piece of glass. So you've got, you've got the front window, the pass, this second seat row, passenger window, and then you've got this triangular window, and this is on both sides. So there's one over here and one over on the other side. And there's, you know, dozens or hundreds of reports of people uh, that break this window, and that allows uh, individuals to um, essentially, hopefully this is visible, they can reach the latch here, uh, and they can open, they can open uh, the second row and fold it down, and then they have full access to the trunk. So there's kind of a security issue here. And there's people that have little, little projects. There's people that have little projects uh, where they have little locking mechanisms that fit so that, the, so that if you break this window, you still can't maneuver uh, the second row of seats forward. So those are nice and pretty and cute, but they're honestly uh, very weak plastic or, you know, just kind of rickety, you know, halfway solutions that fit uh, where that component that you pull on is. So if, if someone really wanted to get into your trunk, uh, even with those mechanisms, they're still going to get into your trunk. So I've been thinking about, uh, you know, if you want to put something in your trunk and you want to make sure it's secure, uh, what are some of the options? So I'm going to go ahead and open my trunk. Okay. And we're just going to open that up. And again, it's just regular Model 3 trunk. I have a liner here, but nothing special. Uh, should be very, very familiar. Uh, here on the, uh, on the left side, you see that there is uh, kind of a cubby. And you can put junk in here and, you know, it goes all the way far back. Right, so that, that should be familiar to a lot of people. And then over here, um, it's usually flat. I think it's whether or not you get the sub, but essentially uh, this section uh, is flat. And you know, you can, you can put pressure on it. It's so like a fabric material. And there's a bit of a sidewall here. It's pretty tough. I mean, it's, it's something. And then over here, again, it's, it's pretty tough on the left. So, you know, there's some pressure points here, but, you know. So I was thinking, what if there was a way that you could secure what's in your trunk? And uh, how would that work? So obviously this space is off. This is, this is not an option because this is just wide open. I mean, what are you going to do, build a box or something? So this is, you know, I wasn't seeing a quick solution here. And then I thought, well, the Model 3 comes uh, by default with this thing called the sub trunk. And mine's full. It's got some bags and some, there's a cooler in here and the charging cable. But there's, there's actually a lot of room in the sub trunk. And you can, you can put stuff in there. Uh, it's got a pretty decent size. So you can put like, you know, expensive camera gear or something that you would prefer that it's, you know, not get stolen even though someone gets into your car. So, um, so then I thought about, you know, how would you make it so that your trunk is secure? And the first thing I thought of was, well, we've got this sub trunk, so why don't we just enable a way so that the sub trunk can't be open? So somebody breaks your window, they lower the back seat, 
this part's empty. Maybe they heard you have stuff in your car. Maybe they want to dig deeper. There's a sub trunk. Well, again, the lid of the sub trunk is not secure. So what if there was a way that we could make it so that that lid is lockable and there's nothing that anyone can do to get in there unless they start, you know, breaking out hacksaws or plasma cutters or something. Obviously, I'm sure you could get to it from under the car if you really, really wanted to get through there. But let's just say we want something quick and easy that's going to resolve, you know, that 1% that use case of someone that's really adamant to get what you have. And here's the solution that I have. So we're going to look to the left. And I had to get several different kinds of these. And I finally found the one that works perfectly for my needs. And, uh, and this, this product is called... Um, it is called the uh, Heavy Duty Pickup Truck Bar. Okay, there's the name of it. And it's on Amazon. And there's like cheap ones that you can get on Harbor Freight that are like $24, $25. And the problem with those, because you're going to find those when you start looking around for these, these bars, is they're made out of cheap, thin metal on the bar that bends easily and it's round. So it's very hard to, you know, if somebody really wanted to, they could pull on that bar and it would just bend and give way and the whole security system would be gone. So in this case, this bar is square. Not only is it square, but it's made out of really beefy metal. This appears to be, uh, you know, I'm probably gonna get it wrong, but one eighth, looks like one eighth steel maybe. It's, it looks it might be less than that, but it's it's really thick. You know, we just see the bar material here. It's really really thick. And this is the bar. It's a square bar that goes all the way down. And what this does is it expands open, right? So it's got a handle here that allows it to expand open from here and grow. And then it's got these really thick rubber feet on both sides, right? So I wasn't sure how secure these rubber feet were going to be. So I was thinking of, uh, you know putting some VHP tape on the side and putting, you know, a uh, loop from Velcro onto the, one of the sides that's more insecure. But it turns out I don't need it. Literally out of the box, this works. So this item on Amazon, I found it for $38 and free shipping. So that's pretty reasonable when you consider, you know, how tough this thing is. And what this is designed to do, by the way, it's, it's a bar that's designed to go uh, onto a flatbed and you expand it and it creates kind of like a partition on your truck so that you can you can store stuff and then you're driving around and it doesn't rattle around but guess what it also serves the purpose that we're going to show here today so <clears throat> i had to do some very minor modifications uh, again i'm not someone that likes to do a lot of mods but i'm going to show you what they are um, and the first mod that i had to do is i just grabbed a little bit of two by four and i cut about three and a half to four inches wide of the two by four and then I picked up uh, a little pack of these what do we call these uh, the one and a quarter inch uh, galvanized tube strap and there's a four pack for like a buck at Lowe's so they're pretty pretty cheap so here's that two by four I cut a piece off of and so here's the galvanized straps and so here's the wood that's been cut and the galvanized traps, real easy with some pliers. It's pretty tough metal, so it's not like, you know, anyone's going to be bending this off with their hands. So, but nonetheless, it is strong enough to produce this solution. And then, of course, on the end of these uh, galvanized tube straps, there's entry points for screws. Now, I didn't want to use any kind of screw that have a regular Phillips or flathead. Because, again, this is a security solution. So I just went to my local hardware and I picked up, you know, it could have been any screw. I just picked up, you know, deck screw that's, uh, you know, painted because uh, I want to make sure it doesn't interact with other steel here. And so this is just, you know, you can find these anywhere. This is uh, one and a quarter inch long and they are uh, security bit. So they're like, you know, they're not really security bit. I mean, you can get star bits. But if you're really trying to steal from somebody, and you're probably not going to be prepared with every bit in the book. So that, you know, that's just something to think about. 
um, this little pack comes with a bit that I didn't need to use. So I only I only needed four of these screws, but this is what they look like. And again, you can get any screw. I recommend one and a quarter inch long. That's the length because of the distance through the wood. And I'm going to show you why I chose a two by four. There's a certain length here. It's very relevant, by the way. Um, so again, the four screws go in. I squared off because the, these uh, these straps come round, by the way. It's like a semicircle, and you grab a, a rubber mallet and just kind of square them off. You, you're gentle. You don't want to you don't want to ruin the metal or make it too weak. And those are driven right into the 2x4 that, again, I, I cut about a 3.5-4 inch and I sanded it all down. I want to make sure nobody gets any splinters putting this thing in or taking it out. And then I just to make sure it doesn't wiggle around, I put uh, many, many, uh, you know, I wrapped it several times around here with um, some electrical tape. Uh, and that you know that just means it's a you know a good tight connection it's not going to wiggle around so this is very tight to the wood and again this is very tight to the bar it's not damaging the bar it's tight enough that it's not going to move and that's the key we want to make sure this piece doesn't move so so then we have the bar and now the bar out of the box doesn't come with a you know a solution where it locks right it's designed to use this handle to ratchet open and closed and I was studying the mechanism, and there actually is a relatively uh, inexpensive way to lock this once you found the correct position. I'm going to show that here. And, you know, it's relatively simple. You can find uh, any small lock. This is just an example. I'm probably not going to use this one. This is a regular TSA lock that you can get for your bags. And again, we're talking someone who's breaking into your car is probably not going to have a TSA key on them. There, you know, I don't know anybody that would prepare that far, but you probably don't want to use a TSA lock because, again, everybody knows that TSA keys are the same. They're like serialed, right? This is Type 7, if you know anything about locks. And so, if you know, people can walk around with all whatever 15 or whatever variations of the TSA keys and get into these locks. So, at the end of the day, we're not looking for anything super special, but um, this is a lock and it's important because it's it's very very thin it's thick enough to do the job but it's thin in a way that it's gonna allow me to grab it and uh, put it through this point here because this this bar um, by the way uh, it has two positions one is unlocked right there and one is locked and so in this position this bar cannot be opened or closed um, specifically it can't be closed which is you know the ability of reducing the security so or undoing the solution so you want to be able to lock this piece down and the way to do that is uh, this happens to be one that fits but you know you can probably find another TSA lock that fits well or one that's not TSA but it's small like this it doesn't have to be you know super amazing this is not this wouldn't be uh, you know a linchpin that I would consider weak. It's good enough that someone would really, really want to get in, like, you know, to, to, to break this solution. But anyway, so this almost fits perfectly. The thing I, I will still have to do on this project is right here, I marked it because I'm going to have to just dremel maybe just a few millimeters. It's not weakening the overall structure, but just a few millimeters right there so that when this goes in, it's going to give me another set of millimeters right here. Uh, so that ultimately I can close this lock and once I've closed it then this piece here cannot move forward uh, which is what is required to unlock the solution. So I'm next going to show you how it fits in the car and again I do have to finish this step but it's going to take me you know 20 minutes with a Dremel so that's probably not something you need to see me do so let's uh, let's have it let's have a look at what what this looks like in the car.